Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Chad Sports Talk. He's on my name's Chad. Take a dive with no sports. This is my NFL Week 17 recap video. That's right, Week 17 is in the books. The playoff picture is getting tighter. Uh, teams have clinched divisions, number one seeds. There's only a few spots left. Some teams are still mathematically in there. You know, they need a lot of help. Um, possible final home games for some players. Other weird antics going on. So we got all that coming up and a little bit more. But before we dive into this uh, 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 recap, let's go ahead and smash that thumbs up for me. Especially like the content I provide you. Please do two cops. I'll promote this channel. You can also subscribe. And I've seen my analytics. I have a lot of y'all uh, watching my videos. I love y'all for that. Does it cost you a dime? And it really helps this channel out to provide more entertainment for you. Well, last week I actually did quite well. Had my second best week ever. I'm actually twelve and four. Um, some games I should have went the other direction because I was baiting where not which way to go, and <laughs> technically I could have <laughs> could have gone fifteen and one. But um, that's just how things kind of play out. And and let's go ahead and just kick this one off with the game out there in Buffalo, New York, where the Bills play host of the Falcons. And this one was a lot closer than I think a lot of people really anticipated. Um, Buffalo had a hard time really getting going. Uh, Matt Ryan was showing, you know, trying to remember everyone that, hey, he went to college up there in, in BC, so he's used to that cold weather. You know, plays down south in the Dome. <laughs> but basically, it was Singletary kind of uh, taking charge of this game. He actually put uh, 110 yards on the ground, two TDs, and ended up just carrying the uh, Falcons. <clears throat> literally <laughs> to the end zone um, and carrying the Bills to a 29-15 victory. Then we went off to Chicago where Anthony Dalton was making his uh, his start um, against the hapless Giants. Mm. You know, the, it was just, you know, the opening uh, drive for the Giants, their first play, you know, being a fumble which set up a touchdown. Uh, Quinn actually set the single season record for Bears sacks, uh, passing Richard Dent. And the Bears was just way too much for, for the hapless G-Men as they rolled 29-3 in a disappointing season for both franchises. <clears throat> in Cincinnati, you had a most electrifying game you can see out there. Uh, Kansas City came into town, take on the Bengals, two of the top teams in AFC right now. Chiefs came in as the number one team, looking to maintain that position for the uh, postseason. You know, Cincinnati had other ideas because that AFC North was really tight, and the Bengals wanted to just put themselves uh, ahead and get away from you know the other you know members of that division. And it looked like it was more of a Chiefs type of game because they were kept you know going up by fourteen, and Cincinnati had come back go up by fourteen. But um, since then they came back, and this game is basically a, a tale of two halves. Uh, Kansas City was dominating in the first half, uh, but they kept letting Cincinnati get back in. And the second half, Kansas City could not do anything. They couldn't uh, connect anyone. It just, just the defense couldn't stop anyone. Especially the secondary is getting burned constantly, getting called for penalties. It was a, a excellent game plan by the Bengals to, to take take care of the Chiefs that second half, and. Jamar Chase had himself a career game. 266 yards receiving on 11 catches, and three of them went for touchdowns. He played a game, catch me if you can, and no one could. Um, Joe Burrow oh, had 446 yards in the air, four touchdowns. I mean, for the past two games, he has 1,000 yards in just two games. So the Bengals are going to be a, a very uh, – down the team or, or team to worry about in the postseason now that they've clinched the AFC North because they beat the Chiefs 34 to 31. And this is a team to actually watch out for in the postseason. Now we head down to Nashville where the Dolphins came to town, take on the Titans. And this is the game that I once again, once again, Frabel and what he's done in there. I kind of went, okay, maybe this is the time for him to shine. Um, the Dolphins defense was, you know, Nothing to be joking about. They were actually a pretty solid defensive core. 
But so was the Titans. I mean, they came in and they they pretty much rattled uh, to an all, all day long. Yeah, they only had 205 yards with an interception. I mean, he couldn't even throw a TD. It, uh, the running game for Tennessee, even without King Henry, is still uh, pretty pretty uh, uh, dominant. We had four men had 130 yards on the ground with a touchdown. And it was Tennessee just, just running amok, just handling business. Yes, they destroyed the Dolphins 34-3. to They clinched the AFC South, eliminating the Dolphins from the postseason. So there's only time to tell. Are the Titans for real in the postseason? Who knows? Then we head off to Indianapolis where uh, Carson Wentz was able to uh, get himself back into the uh, game after testing positive. He was able to get back in there and, and, and play. But the Raiders had um, made him some extra motivation because of, uh, of course, of John Manning passing over the, the the week, the past week, and all the NFL actually all did tributes for him, and and, and the Raiders actually put his his initials on the back of their helmet. Maybe they used that that little bit of inspiration, and they just came out. Um, they handled their business. Taylor still had a great game for the Colts. He had 100 yards with, with a touchdown, but the Raiders did just enough to uh, set up a game-winning field goal and win 23-20 to keep their playoff hopes alive. Up doing New England, where uh, the hapless Jaguars went up to uh, take on the Patriots, and it was just a laughing stock right there. Um, Mac Jones was just having a field day. He was 22 of 30, 227 yards, three touchdowns. He was laughing up with Bill Jack on the sideline. It was just a a romp. The Jaguars, as the Bengals, or excuse me, the Patriots won fifty to ten. And in the Meadowlands, where the hapless Jets were taking on the the Buccaneers, and the Jets were actually up early, doing some razzle dazzles, doing some things they had to do. But it wasn't the um, what was going on on the field that created the most buzz. What created the most buzz was the antics of a certain player in the middle of the third quarter. The Buccaneers were on the field. Um, Antonio Brown wasn't in the lineup. He's actually sitting on the bench um, prior to that play. There's a lot of speculations why that was happening. I guess I think Horton, Antonio Brown, he had an ankle injury, but, um, but I don't think that's really the case. Um, a lot of people said he was benched because he was about to receive almost a, a million dollars of bonuses. And well, he had another game still to play, so I doubt that. I think he was like eight receptions away, 55 yards, and then touchdown for getting uh, almost a million dollars. Brady was trying to talk to him when he was on the bench, trying to keep him calm. Well, no, because Brady was his, his biz, biggest advocate on this franchise. Uh, Mark Evans was trying to you know, talk to him, keep him in there, because you know that's the one-two punch for the receiving core. But for some reason, Antonio Brown took off his pad, his jersey, his pads, chucked his shirt, his gloves into the stands, was doing jumping jacks, jogging, you know, saying bye, throwing out the peace sign, I'm out. And then he went into uh, New York City, cut a a song, you can see him later on, and that's game. I mean, I don't know what's wrong with this guy, and this is the stuff that's been going on with AB since he got cut, uh, let go by the Steelers. To let you know there's something not completely right with this guy. Um, you don't just quit a team, period. I mean, that's that's I've never seen that happen ever. Uh, someone just walking out of a game. I mean, it shows me that AB only cares about one person. That's AB. Even though Tom Brady stuck his neck out for this guy, he shafted him, walked out on him, and Bruce Aaron said the best. He's no longer a buck. Um, he should have been brought back after that fake fake vaccination card. Injuries kind of dictate other things, and this guy's getting opportunity after opportunity to to uh, present himself. I mean, he tried with the Raiders; he didn't last long there. Came up New, uh, New England, uh, didn't play very much there, and he came now back with uh, Tom Brady in Tampa Bay, where he was actually good last year. Key aspects, but beat uh, despite AB's antics, Tampa Bay actually came back to beat the Jets. 28 to 24. 
And they're going to head off to the nation's capital where Washington's playing host to Philadelphia. The Washington's looking at hopes to spoil Philadelphia's uh, postseason aspirations. And they were up 16 to, 7, 16 to 7 at half. But second half, the Eagles just showed up. And like I said, this is like the Eagles' uh, mantra so far. You know, they'll have a slow start and then just come in and close out the game. Exactly what they did. Um, a late interception of Heineke sealed it. And the Eagles clinched. A playoff position beating Washington 20 to 16. On another note, uh, February 2nd, Washington's announced they're going to actually you know, uh, promote their, their new nickname and logo on February 2nd. And pretty much, I think the, the Wolves and Red Wolves have been uh, ruled out due to trademark issues. Apparently, that's what they're saying. So, who knows what their team name is going to be? And then we head out to Baltimore, where the uh, Lamar Liss Ravens were playing host to the Rams. And this is another game that's just started out so bad for the Rams. They just couldn't get anything going. Um, Stafford threw a pick six early in the game, which means, you know, Stafford got confused a little bit by the coverage or didn't see the guy there. Um, it took a while for the Rams to get going. But with the Ravens without Lamar, is not quite the same Ravens. And the Rams were able to come back uh, thanks to key catches by uh, Cooper Cup and uh, Obey J. You know, Odell Beckham Jr. And Stafford had 309 yards, two TDs, won the Cup, won the OBJ, and that was it. The Rams was able to sneak out of Baltimore 20-19. They had to L.A. where the Broncos came to town take on the Chargers. This is pretty much a win to stay in. Uh, if you lose, you're out in the Broncos. And I don't think was a, a a good team to really kind of go into that, even though their defense has actually been playing be- better without Von Miller uh, for some reason. Uh, the secondary is something to, uh, to worry about because you got uh, Patrick Sertain back there in the secondary for the Broncos. It didn't matter. Uh Justin Herbert did what he had to do. He's picking them apart. Eckler was not much of a factor in this one, but it was an arrow showdown as the Chargers eliminated the Broncos from the postseason by just beating them 34-13. Then we head up to San Francisco where the 49ers playing host of the Texans. Uh, the Texans were the team that surprised the Chargers last week in H-Town. But up there in Santa Clara, Trey Lance got the start over the uh, injured uh, Jimmy G, which is I think was the best move for them. You know, give this kid some uh, uh, it's like playing experience against a you know, team that's going to be hungry just to knock knock you off. But uh, slow start by Trey, and but he came on towards the end because it was it was a seven three Texans lead at half. So there was a lot of things you have to work out with Trey Lance um, to get him back in the groove. But they're able to do that, especially when you got uh, uh, Debo Samuel's back there or for, for your receiver. I mean, just give the man the ball, and he's just going to Debo everyone. And the 49ers beat the Texans 23-7. Was it pretty? No, but it was effective for Trey Lance. Then the Cardinals went down in the Big D. Uh, I picked Dallas because how Dallas was playing and how Arizona was playing. What I failed to take into effect was two things. Dallas can't beat teams with winning records. And Kyle Murray is undefeated in AT&T Stadium. Kyle Murray used to play uh, high school football down in Texas. He actually used to play in AT&T Stadium towards the end of the state uh, playoff runs. And he's always been undefeated there. When he was at, at uh, Oklahoma, he went down to Arctic Tennis for the Big 12 Championship game. One then. Um, another parents moved with the Cardinals into Dallas. One then, so he's already seven and zero in AT and T. And just something about playing teams with winning records, the Cowboys tend to fall back. Um, they put up these great offensive numbers against teams that they should beat by a lot, like they did with Washington. So I didn't, you know, I didn't jump on that bandwagon saying, you know, the Cowboys are back. Because I knew who they played, um, but you know, just it seems seems to be the same mo every time. And the Cardinals are also one of these teams that are just hard to win or hard to beat on the road. 
I mean, the Roadbirds. They're just, and I think that's what the end this team is, is the Roadbirds. And uh, Arizona did what they had to do to beat Dallas 25-22. to And the Dallas defense had no interceptions. I don't think they even had a sack. So Arizona did everything right, what they had to do. And I don't know. If, if these, these two are, are right now look like they could face off again in the first round. That'd be a, a scary time for the Cowboys. Then we head down to uh, New Orleans, where the Saints are playing host of the Panthers. The Saints had to win to maintain their uh, hopes for the postseason. Uh, Taysom Hill is back there, uh, starting back there once again. But Carolina kept this game interesting, so I give credit to the Carolina's defense doing what they had to do to kind of stifle uh, Taysom Hill to not uh, be able to get the the, the right offensive plays in, but uh, it wasn't really enough. The Saints were able to beat the Panthers 18-10 to keep their slim, slim chances alive. And then we head out to Seattle, where the hapless Lions we visit the Seahawks. Uh, Boyle was the starter up there for the Lions. This could be, you know, Wilson Wilson's uh, final season in, you know, Seattle. And but the, the Seahawks came out and just went nuts. Uh, they just put up points left, right, and center. They're up thirty-one-seven at the half. They're pretty much done, over with. The Lions tried to come back, but it was just too little too late. Also, the Metcalf hooked up for three touchdowns as the Seahawks demolished the Lions. 51-29. to And then Lambeau Field. Uh, he had the Vikings come to town, take on the Packers. Uh, with this one, I didn't have any questions whatsoever. It's Green Bay. It's Aaron Rodgers. Um... It's hard to really beat uh, Aaron Rodgers at Lambeau. That just seems to be, you know, one of those, no, those marriages you see in football that just works the best. Um, Dante Adams had 136 yards at a touchdown. Uh, Aaron Jones was only 76 yards on the ground. Aaron Rodgers only had 288 yards in the air, but two touchdowns. But it was enough to beat the hapless Vikings. 37-10 to 10 to clinch the number one seed in the NFC. So the road to the Super Bowl in the NFC has to go through Lambeau. And that's not an easy place to play, especially in postseason. And then last night's game, um, for some reason, I keep falling for it. And I think it's just me. I always seem to pick the Browns. I always want to say it's just a matter of time before Baker just clicks some things in there and, and – they start producing the way they should be producing because all everything they have on that team, they should be doing more than what they are. Um, but they also kind of forgot about this could be possibly Big Ben's last game at Heinz Field. And you know the Steelers faithful, the Steelers players who all love Big Ben is going to come make sure they do what they have to do to make sure he leaves a, a winner and Najee Harris came to play. I mean, he was stiff arming guys and and just dropping them on the floor. Uh, Chubb was doing the exact same thing. He actually bounced a guy off the ground with a stiff arm, and that's you know not an easy thing to do. So the running backs of both teams came out to play. Uh, one was a little bit uh, a lot better. Um, the the Steelers front was phenomenal. Uh, T.J. Watt had four sacks last night, four of them, which kind of tied a franchise record for most sacks in the game. He's now, what, uh, uh, a sack or two sacks away from uh, tying straight hands and then close to beating it, and he still has, he still has one more game to go. Uh, Najee Harris actually uh, has the most rushing yards for a rookie running back, passing the, the uh, great Franco Harris. But Franco did in 14 games, but that's beside the point. <laughs> and Big Ben wasn't, you know, his performance wasn't pretty, but he did enough. Uh, Baker, this guy, um, if his passes weren't uh, 
accurate enough. He was either throwing throwing overhead or just in the wrong spot. His accuracy has gone immensely downhill. Um, but if he was on time, most of the time his receivers were just dropping the balls when they should be having them. And besides the two touchdowns he threw, but he was like 16 of 38, and he had, I think at least 10 of those should have been caught. Um, so that's not helping him. And plus, you know, getting sacked nine times doesn't help either, um, especially with an injured, injured non-throwing soldier shoulder. And there's a lot of th- things in there. But after a while, you got to stop making excuses for Baker and, and you might have to look at it. Okay, do we uh, draft a replacement? And keep Baker for one more year, see if he gets that surgery, because he's already said he's going to take the surgery in the offseason, but not sure he's going to start it uh, next week. Or um, do we write him out for one more year after the surgery and see how it plays out? Um, If I'm the Browns, I'm definitely looking at drafting another quarterback, maybe uh, creating a little controversy in that that, uh, quarterback room, maybe to light the fire into Baker to kind of, you know, nullify some, some things. And then again, he may just fold under pressure. Who knows? Um, but that's definitely one of those things you really have to kind of look out for with that. And Cleveland is uh, was already eliminated mathematically prior to that game. And Pittsburgh chances are still hopeful. There's a lot of scenarios that need to happen. Um, they have to win against the Ravens and then Oh, I think it was the, I think the Chargers and Broncos can't end the tie and the Colts had to lose to the Jaguars. I mean, there's just a lot of things that kind of uh, uh, come into play to figure out who's going to be in for that last spot. So there's still a shot for the Steelers, still a shot for the Ravens. I mean, there's there's a few teams still has a, a, a inclination of getting in there. So that's definitely come down to the wire. And let's go ahead and just look at these standings. Um, as you can see, Tennessee is the top of the AFC right now due to the fact that the Chiefs losing and the, and, and the, and the Titans have that uh, tiebreaker due to a uh, 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 head-to-head win percentage. Uh, Cincinnati right now is, is the number three team. We have the edge over the Bills. Due to a uh, winning percentage in conference, and right now the Bills have the edge with the Patriots doing their their divisional series matchups. So, the Buffalo New England still has a fight for that last divisional title. See who was at home game. Um, New England needs to win. Buffalo needs to lose. Buffalo just needs to win, and they're in. Right now, the Colts haven't clinched, but uh, but they have the tiebreaker of the Chargers due to a uh, percentage of conference games. Which you know the uh, divisional thing uh, record between the Chargers and Raiders separates those two. So it means that Raiders are you know number eight right now on the outside looking in. So definitely need some help to get in there. And you still got Pittsburgh and Baltimore still battling to try to get in that last spot, but needs a lot of help. So it looks like it's going to be between Indy, L.A., and Las Vegas. Who's going to be six and seven? On the NFC side, uh, Green Bay is already in number one seed, locked up. Uh, the Rams right now are the number two because they have the uh, they've won their head-to-head matchup over Tampa Bay, uh, but they still have to worry about clinching that the uh, division <laughs> because basically, if they lose to uh, they lose it last week and and the, the Cardinals win, the Cardinals take the West. So, so a lot of things there. Uh, Tampa Bay's already clinched the division. That's just worried about placement. Same thing with Dallas. They clinched there. So they worry about uh, uh, placement. Uh, Arizona still has a divisional title to play for. Uh, San Francisco needs a win, uh, but they got that tiebreaker over Philly. He's already clinched theirs, but not the 49ers. I don't know, because I, th- I think Philly has the edge over the Saints, but the uh, 49ers do not. So I think it's one of those weird little unwances <laughs> of the tiebreakers of, you know, which, which piece did uh, – they uh, uh, match up against. So <laughs> you look at it that way. So that's probably why you know the Eagles are in, but uh, currently the 49ers have the edge for that sixth spot. So 
Jalen Hurst has you know, got the Eagles into the postseason, and I think the 49ers would actually punch their ticket in. You know, that's just one of those things. He's got to happen to deal with it. Um, but, hey, you know, I've been promoting that the, uh, the NFL has nothing but Sunday games this last week. And me being, the, you know, the dumb dumb for totally forgot about the flex scheduling. So you got two games Saturday and a Sunday night game to worry about. So I will get this, uh, uh, the season finale of this season, week 18 preview video out to you guys on Friday. And just let me know that in the comments below which game was uh, the most impressive for you, which one was the most disappointing. Uh, what are you looking forward towards next week? Are your Super Bowl picks still in? Mine are, because one now has clinched the number one seed in our conference. So I still had the Chiefs. Like I said, I had Chiefs and Packers in Super Bowl at the beginning of the season. So we'll see if that one happens. And just let me know down below what you think. Uh, where are you there? Like I said, you can smash that thumbs up for me. It helps out with the algorithms. helps out with this channel. Once there, you can also subscribe. Once you subscribe, you hit that bell notification. let you know next time I post a video. And I'll see you next time on Chat Sports Talk.